Hi everyone, I'm Elliot and this morning we're here at Changi Point to check out what we can find here at the Seagrass Meadows. Now we're here at low tide, so at high tide all this will be covered. But now that the tide has receded, we can see all the seagrass meadows are exposed. So seagrasses are different from seaweeds in that they are flowering plants, whereas seaweeds are a type of algae actually. Over here we have examples of seaweed. So here we have green seaweed or green algae, we have brown algae, and then we have red algae. So the difference between seagrass and seaweed is that for seaweed, or, or you can call them algae too, um, they don't have any recognizable plant parts, so you don't see any like kind of leaves or roots. Whereas for seagrass, um, they have very clear plant-like structures and they actually are rooted into the sand. So seagrasses are very important because they provide a key habitat, um, food and shelter for many marine organisms. So when we walk uh, amongst the seagrass meadows, we need to make sure that we are careful not to tread on some of them because they're all hidden inside the seagrasses. So over here we have a biscuit sea star and what makes biscuit sea stars different is that they almost always have five arms and each of the arms is short and rounded at the tip. Oh, something else is moving. Oh, look. So this is a sea hare. So sea hares actually have two sets of tentacles on their head. So one pair is near their mouth and the other pair is on top of their head. And that's where they get the nickname sea hares because the tentacles on top of the head look like rabbit ears. Sea hares feed on seaweed and algae and most of the times they have the colour to match um, the stuff that they feed on and also the texture for camouflage. Whoa! Whoa, look at this! So this is an eight-armed Luidia sea star and it's a huge sea star. As you can see, this is my hand and this is the sea star. So you can actually see his tube feet moving and they're really long, big. So this is a very unique sea star because as you can see, it has eight arms. Whereas most will have like four or five or even six. But this is eight and it's huge. So we've gone through quite a few sea stars but this one is a real gem. Now this is a knobbly sea star. Can you see all the little knobs? So knobbly sea stars are normally found in our seagrass meadows and right the knobs can actually be used to identify certain individuals because of the arrangement they're like tiger stripes each individual has a different arrangement of knobs now this is a small one and it can get pretty big so as we we're talking just now most sea stars have um, let's say five arms right that's what we normally think but here's one with just four sometimes sea stars get injured and then they have to regrow the arms. So as you can see this one right here is smaller than the rest. So it probably got damaged somehow and this one is like growing out again. Over here we have probably one of the weirdest animals that we found today. So this is a sea pen and uh, sea pens are related to anemones. So they all have um, stinging tentacles and they kind of feed in the same way. Um, except that anemones feed on much larger prey, these ones feed on um, smaller ones and they kind of filter edible bits out of the water also. Sea pens like anemones are also home to a bunch of small creatures and the bigger sea pens, um, you'll be able to find crabs like Boston crabs living inside. Okay, as you can see I got a bit dirty today. I had a lot of fun, I hope you guys had a lot of fun learning things about all our marine life around us. So we're really a city in nature here in Singapore, we just need to know where to find all these amazing animals. There's so much more for you to see. Just come down for yourself and discover these title treasures. See you next time.